Today we are going to look at the mysterious physics behind a Canadian classic in the physics of curling. In this video, we are going to examine the contact between the curling ice and the curling stone. Why it curls, paying careful attention to its direction and timing, and the theories of the effects of sweeping on the stone. Let's begin by learning a little about the curling stones, which are in fact mined from the same regions of Scotland and Wales to ensure consistency, which is also where the games originated. The stones are made of hydrophobic granite and each weigh 42 pounds, or approximately 19 kilograms. Most people don't know this, but the bottom of the stone isn't flat, and has an air pocket, so the surface area resembles a donut. This air pocket is also known as the annulus. This bottom view of the curling stone shows the annulus more clearly, but does not display the curvature of the stone. This curvature leads to an even narrower section of the stone touching the ice, known as the contact ring. The surface of the ice, likewise, is also not flat, but is instead pebbled with tiny droplets of water being frozen on the surface. This means that the stone makes even less contact with the ice as it now rests on a pebbled surface. The pebbled surface doubles to reduce the suction that would form between two objects sliding across a wet surface, thus decreasing surface adhesion. The meltwater that would normally accumulate would now flow around the contact ring, pooling between the frozen droplets of water and not suction against the bottom of the stone. The motion of the curl is quite perplexing. Take this overturned glass. If it were thrown like a curling stone and given a spin upon release, a curler might think that a counterclockwise spin would cause the stone to curl to the left. But the glass curls to the right, since an object that is slowing down will lean forward and increase friction in the leading half. Less friction in the rear causes the glass to curl in the direction of the instantaneous velocity of the trailing half. One of the most popular theories as to why the stone curls is due to the accumulation of meltwater near the front of the stone. This lubricating water reduces the friction of in the front of the stone, which is the opposite to that of the glass. Since the friction is greater in the back than it is in the front, the larger force of friction in the trailing half would determine the direction of the net force. An opposite spin would result in the direction of the net force pointing in the opposite direction. The rotation of the stone is due to the initial spin that the curler applies to the stone upon release and will eventually lead to a curl to the right, if the spin was clockwise, and vice versa. The curl is very slight and not at all apparent for the majority of the motion, but is mostly noticeable when the stone is slowing down and coming to a complete stop. A newer theory to why the curling stone actually curls utilizes the pebbled surface, claiming that the microscopic roughness of the leading half of the rock carves tiny scratches against the surface of the frozen pebbles. The rotation of the leading half gives these microscopic scratches a slight curve in the direction of the rotation. For example, clockwise scratches will point to the right. The trailing half of the stone will naturally want to follow these tiny scratches. As the stone slows down, the scratches are pointed more to the side, which explains why the curl is more significant towards the end of its motion. There are two popular theories on how sweeping affects the stone's movement. The first theory is that the sweeping melts the ice in front of the stone and creates a lubricating effect from the water between the stone and the ice. The other theory is that the sweeping reduces the coefficient of friction between the ice and the stone by raising the temperature of the ice, which also allows the ice to melt easier. However, many suggest that there cannot be a lubricating layer of water, since the rock rests on many raised, pebbled points of ice, thus never truly making contact with the water that sits trapped beneath. Against that though, as each point of the ice experiences significant pressure from the rock, the pressure causes each point to mount enough and create a lubricating layer. Regardless, sweeping is known to brush away any debris on the ice to create a smooth path for the rock to follow and slide into victory. Using this knowledge, curlers are able to change the trajectory of the stones long after they are released. 